A pandas series is a one-dimensional labeled array that can hold data of various types, similar to a column in a spreadsheet. It is a fundamental data structure in pandas and is often used for tasks that involve working with single-dimensional data. You can also create a pandas series from a wide variety of data sources, such as Python lists, arrays, dictionaries, or other pandas objects. The first thing we need to do here is actually import pandas, and I've gone ahead and created a list here just called data that has a series of integers. And so we're gonna use that list to actually create our panda series. So I'm just gonna name it series and we'll set it equal to PD, which is our pandas reference and then series. And all we have to do here is just pass in that list reference here. And then if we just wanna reference the series, we can actually visualize it here in Jupyter Notebook. Now, as you can see here, each element in a series has an associated index label which can be customized or automatically generated for us by pandas. This label allows us to efficiently access the data and potentially manipulate it. And by default, the index labels are integers incrementing starting at zero and up from there. Now you can also create and apply custom indexes to any series using the index parameter. So what I've done here is just create another list that has some custom indexes and I can just create a new variable to hold my series. And just for the sake of clarity, we'll call this series with custom index. And I'm going to set it equal to pd.series again, pass in my data list. And then here I'm going to reference the index parameter and set it equal to this list that I created right there. And again, to visualize it, let's just go ahead and reference it. And we can see here now that our custom index values of capital letters have been applied here. Now, another important thing to know about series is that unlike a Python list, a series must contain homogeneous values, meaning that it must have data that's all of the same data type. You can also create a series using a dictionary that has a list of key value pairs where the key is going to be the index and the value is going to be the actual element value. So I'll create a series from dictionary variable here, and then pd.series. And then we'll just pass in our dictionary data here. And in this case, we don't have to reference this index parameter because it's gonna recognize as a dictionary and it's gonna go ahead and pull those key value pairs out. And so if I wanted to go ahead and print this out, we'll see that it gives us that series now with those custom lowercase letter index values. Now, as with any data collection that we have built into Python, like lists or tuples or sets or dictionaries, it's important that you know how to access the elements of the container or the data collection. And th there's no exception here with series, we have to know how to access elements. And you can access elements either using the index position or the index label. So for example here, the third value in this series, we just created this series from dictionary. Well, what what index is going to reside at is going to be zero relative. So just like anything else in Python where our index starts at zero. So if I want to access the third element, that's going to be position two. Alternatively, we can also access the same element value using its respective index label. So in this case, uh, 300 is at index C. So I can go ahead and just let's copy and paste this. And let's reference index C here. Now you can perform various data operations on a series, things like slicing or performing mathematical operations. And slicing a series works similar to slicing a Python string or a list, but with some additional capabilities, such as using our index labels to reference them. So here I've created a, another list of some data, and then I have an index list. And so I'm gonna use this to create a new series. I'll just call it a new series. So again, PD series and we're just gonna reference the data list, and then again, index parameter, our index list there. And if I want to print that out just to visualize it, we can either you know, explicitly write print new series, or you know, because we're working in Jupyter Notebook here, we can actually just reference the series like we have before. And there we have it. And so if I want to slice this series, I can use either the element positions or the labels. So if I use the element positions, it's going to, whatever value I give it as the first is going to be included, and then the last index is going to be excluded, right? So it's very similar to when you slice strings. 
So if I just say new series here, and then I reference one through five, it's going to pull out from the first index, so index one that is, up to index four, which is the value E. Now you can assign this to a variable if you want to. So if you wanted to say sliced by index and set it equal to that, and then of course we can just reference that variable and it'll print out like that. We can also create a variable called sliced by label and set that equal to new series. But this time we reference the actual label. So if I wanted to slice from label B up to, and in this case it's including, uh, when you use the labels is actually inclusive up to that value. We're gonna actually get something slightly different here, right? So it's gonna go all the way up to G there for us. Now, some other things that you can do is you can carry out mathematical operations against series. So you can apply a constant or you can apply a function. So let's just add a constant here. So if I wanted to take my new series and I wanted to actually just simply add 10 to it, I can just say new series 10. And as long as my series contains number values, right? It's not a string or it's not a Boolean then it'll actually just add that constant here and apply that change on every single element inside that series. Of course, I can apply this and save it to a variable if I want to. Right, so we can just say new series plus 10 if I could type here, right? And then if we printed that out, see those values. Alternatively, we can also write a function and apply it to it. Now, you know, we, we understand that there's, there, we can write custom functions. That's something that we can talk about in another video, but we can also use shorthand functions that we call Lambda functions. So a Lambda function in Python is a small anonymous function that can take any number of arguments, but it can only have one actual expression to it. And to apply it, we can use what's called the apply method, which is part of pandas that allows us to apply very easily apply a function to one axis of either a data frame, which we'll talk about later, or in this case, a series. And this allows us to basically do more complicated mathematical operations. So for example, if I wanted to take every value in my series and raise it to the power of two. So we'll just create a new variable here, new series raised power two, and we'll set that equal to new series. And then I'm gonna write this apply function here. And if I want to create a Lambda function, I just need to use the keyword Lambda. And then I'm going to say, okay, for the variable X here, which is going to be one of my, just any value in my series, I'm going to take that as X. I want to take that and I want to raise it to the power two, right? So again, in Python, double asterisk here is the raised operation. And then two would be the value that you want to raise it to. And so if I run this and print out the result, you can see it's taken my original series there and all the values inside of it. And it's raised to the power of two. So 10 raised to the power of two is hundred. This is a really, really useful feature in pandas that we can use this apply function. And it doesn't have to necessarily be just a Lambda function. You can define your own you know, user defined functions and apply them just in the same exact manner. Now there's also a variety of descriptive statistics methods that can be used to summarize values in a series. And I'm not gonna type them all out manually here. You can see I've got mean, standard deviation count, basically all of our descriptive statistics. Uh, there's more actual descriptive statistic methods available than just the ones I have listed here. But if we take this and run it against that series, we're gonna get a nice summary of all the values inside of that series. Now, in some other cases, you might find it useful to actually combine two or more series data sets into one. So for example, let's say that I have these two series data sets here. Each one of them has three elements. We've got one, two, three in the first one and four, five, six in the second one. If I want to combine them, what I can do is I can use the concat method. And so we'll just say S concat is the name of my variable. And I'm gonna set it equal to PD dot concat, which stands for concatenate. And I want to actually put these inside of brackets and reference those two series variables there. Now, when I do that, if I want to actually print this out, what you'll see is it's just going to basically marry them together. Just It's just combining them together 
and it's not actually changing the index or resetting the index values. It's retaining the original index values. If you want to actually reset the index, you just take the same line of code here and then you just add the parameter here, ignore index equals true. So I'm just gonna copy this right here. So just ignore index equals true. And if we run this, we can see that it actually resets the indexes at zero up to how many elements we actually have in this series. An important thing you should know how to do with a series is to actually filter data in the series. And we're gonna talk about some more advanced things when we get into data frames, but we'll just look here at a simple filter. If I wanted to actually filter one of my series, I could just use a simple Boolean expression. So I could say that my, you know, this S concat uh, series here, that I wanted to take any value inside of it that's greater than two and actually display that. And so you can see it's filtered out one and two, and it's just gone with the values that are greater than two. So that covers the basics of creating and working with Pandas series. In our next video, we'll talk about how we can create and work with Pandas data frames. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos or lessons. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.